All praise and thanks belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him, we seek His help and aid, we ask His forgiveness for all the evils of our own souls and the evils and the sins that we commit. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. My brothers and my sisters, why me? Limada ana? Why me? Many people have no interest in their religion over time and struggle in their faith. Sometimes they doubt their faith. Sometimes some even wonder if God is really there. One ongoing battle people are faced within their faith is the fact that becoming a true believer does not make us immune to life's trials and tribulations. Why would a good and loving God allow us to go through such things as the death of a close one, sickness to ourselves and our loved ones, financial hardships, worry, depression, fear, Surely, if God loves us and is all-powerful, he would distance us from all of these. After all, doesn't loving us mean he wants our lives to be easy and comfortable? This is the question that many people ask. Of course, the reason for this spiritual battle people have to face deep within their own souls is because they are not connected to a strong faith. As a result, they become vulnerable to the ill effects of a weak faith. We all face storms in life. Some are more difficult than others. But as Muslims, when we meet trials and various kinds of tests, we know that's why we have the gift of Iman, the gift of faith. In fact, Due to our faith, we all have stories we won't ever tell because we know what the primary objective of strong faith lies, not in the holy glorying and extolling the Most High with words sought out with care that might magnify His blessed name, but in its ability to inspire greater awe and consciousness of God in all circumstances. <coughs> From an Islamic point of view, having the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only way by which the heart could be tenderized. The intention is cleansed. Deeds are accepted. And the soul enjoys eternal bliss. Therefore, trials in life are not meant to make us fail, but to prove how strong we are, as there is no faith without test. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alif Lam Mim, Ahasiban Nasu Ayyuturaku, Ayyakulu Amanna Wahum La Yuftanun, Wala Kodafatan Aladina Min Kabalihim. فَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَيَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ That do people think that they will be left alone because they say we believe and we will not be tested? And we indeed tested those who were there before them. And Allah will certainly make it known the truth of those who are true and will certainly make it known the falsehood of those who are liars. Although Allah knows all of that before putting them to any test. So my brothers and my sisters, clearly what is inferred from this verse is adversity. During the times of trials and tribulations, the veil is lifted and the scope of our conviction in Allah is revealed. 
those who are genuine in faith will triumph and those whose faith is false and shaky will drop like a rock. This is why for the believers the testing of Iman and testing of faith produces steadfastness because it has a divine purpose. Once we sincerely believe in Allah, we have to be prepared for all the different trials and tests and adversities and calamities and tribulations. We have to be prepared for all sorts of challenges and obstacles that will certainly come in different forms. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in Quran, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوعِ وَنَقَصٍ مِّنَ الْأَمْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ أُولَئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّنْ رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُهْتَدُونَ that we will surely test you with some fear, hunger, and loss of wealth, lives, and produce. But give glad tidings to the steadfast. Those who when a calamity befalls them, they say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. That verily from Allah we came, and to him is our return. Upon these are the blessings from their Lord and mercy. And also these people are the rightly guided ones. These verses clearly define the people of faith as those who accept the decree of Allah with perseverance through which they achieve victory from all of life's trials and tribulations. We know even the best of Allah's creation, the prophets of Allah, they faced heavy adversity for most part of their lives. Likewise, the true followers of these great men, their personal faith in their Lord had been severely shaken to the core, but they came out victorious. Their stories of unmatched struggles should be talked about and taught to strengthen our faith and our own faith personally. Every one of us from time to time has to personally face tests in our lives to grow and be cleansed so as to improve ourselves as a true man and a true woman in faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has summarized the characteristics of the believers by saying, Ajaban li amril mu'min, inna amrahu kullahu lahu khair, wa laysa thalika li ahadin illa lil mu'min, in asabatahu sarra'u shakarah, fakana khairan lah, wa in asabatahu darra'u sabarah, fakana khairan lah. That how amazing is the case of the believer. There is good for him in everything. And this is exclusively for the believers only. If he experiences something pleasant or happiness, he is thankful. And that is good for him. And if he comes across some adversity or calamity or trial or tribulations, then he is patient. And that is good for him. My brothers and my sisters, this is the attitude that we as believers have to inculcate. When we are blessed with something, we have to remember Allah. Many times we ask Allah for, for things and when we are blessed with it, we don't even remember where it came from. We are not thankful. We don't even thank Allah. The believer is when he or she is blessed with a fortune or a, or a good thing, they thank Allah. 
And when a, a, a calamity or a, tri a, tri a trial or a tribulation or some test befalls him, he or she is patient. And that is good for him. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when Allah wills good for his slaves, he hastens the punishment for him in this world. And when Allah wills ill for his slave, he withholds the punishment for his sins from him until he comes with all his sins on the day of resurrection. In another hadith reported by Abu Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whenever a Muslim is afflicted with a hardship, sickness, sadness, worry, harm, or depression, even the prick of a thorn, Allah Azza wa Jal expiates his sins because of it. Reported in Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says, the ailment is intensified for the righteous. Whenever a believer is afflicted with a hardship, be it a thorn or more, a sin is taken off of him because of it, and he is elevated in Jannah. Um Salama radiallahu anha said, I heard the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, There is no Muslim who is stricken with a calamity and says what Allah has enjoined, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon that verily to Allah we belong and unto him is our return. And also by saying, O Allah, reward me for my affliction and compensate me with something better, but that Allah will compensate him with something better. Reported in Sahih Muslim. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, expect good. Because Allah Azza wa Jal makes a believer's sickness an expiation for his sins and a period of repose. As for a disbeliever falls sick, he is like a camel whose owner ties it and then lets it loose. It does not understand why it was tied nor why it was freed. So the believer, that's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we fall sick and when we are afflicted with a calamity, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expiate our sins. So it's a good thing also. We must know that tests and trials will come higher in intensity the closer we get to Allah. In other words, the stronger your iman and the closer you get to Allah, you will experience more tests from Allah. The farther away you're from Allah, you might find that everything is going smooth. There is nothing, no calamity, nothing, no misfortune. When you're closer to Allah, Allah tests you more. That's, that's what it is. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has confirmed this point. When he was asked, which people suffer the greatest affliction? He, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replied, The prophets. Then those who come next to them. Then those who come next to them. A man is afflicted in keeping his religion. If he is formed in his religion, his trial is severe. But if there is weakness in his religion, it is made light for him and it continues like that until he walks on the earth having no sins reported in At-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam relates I visited Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam while he was suffering from a high fever I touched him with my hand and said O oh, Allah's Apostle, you have a high fever. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, 
Yes, I have as much favor as two men of you, as two men of you have. That's the kind of a, a fever. So I said, is it because you will get a double reward? Allah's Apostle Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yes, no Muslim is afflicted with harm because of sickness or some other inconvenience, but that Allah will remove his sins for him as a tree sheds its leaves. Reported in Sahih Bukhari. My brothers and my sisters, it should be noted at an abstract level, adversity in good times is many times greater than adversity in bad times. In general, people always find that it is easy to remember God, generally, non-Muslims also, easy to remember God when everything is going wrong. Then they turn to Allah, turn to God Almighty. During these adverse times, they turn to Allah and become more obedient as they get closer to Him. On the other side, people always find it hard to remember Allah when everything appears to be going good. During happy times, it is hard to be thankful. People become complacent as they fully submerge themselves in their desires, causing them to be drifted away from the remembrance of Allah. The great scholar, Sufyan, said, what a person dislikes may be better for him than what he likes, because what he dislikes causes him to call upon Allah, whereas what he likes may make him heedless. Hence, if we claim that we truly believe in Allah, then we should always seize the opportunity to, of proving our loyalty to our Lord and gain his rewards which come with the test. My brothers and my sisters, we should be content with Allah's decree and seek his guidance at all times. If something does not turn out the way we want it to be, then it doesn't mean that's the end of the world. During the times of trials, we should not be dissuaded by our wounds or fall into that kind of grief and depression that would cause us to lose our mind and to even lose our Iman. We should always keep in mind that Allah is not unjust. Allah is never unjust to his servants in any ways and that he does things for merciful reasons for us. Although we may not be able to see beyond the surface of what's happening. Remember the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, if Allah wishes for his servant good, he hastens for him his punishment in this life. And in another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the people who suffered much trials in this life are rewarded by Allah on the day of judgment, those who lived comfortable lives on earth would wish that their skin had been cut to pieces with scissors in order to achieve the same honor and reward that those who were tried are receiving. Remember, life is a journey and the road will not always be smooth and pleasant. In fact, Throughout our travels, we will encounter many challenges. Some of these challenges will test our courage, our strength, our weaknesses, and our iman, our faith. But be aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be using tragedies and turmoil and tribulations to get our attention or he may be using adversity to, to draw us closer to him. Many times someone is unaware and heedless and just afflicted with a small calamity, they remember Allah. So some, of, some calamities are there 
to draw us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will only truly live our lives while we immerse, while we are immersed in the present moment, contemplating on the purpose of our existence. Otherwise, life is just passing us by. This world provides the best place for the believers in the hereafter. This life reminds us that whatever sufferings, difficulties, and loss we endure in this world would only be for a short period of time. Once we patiently handle these trials and be grateful to Allah, He will open up doors and paths for us, no matter what the circumstances is. The bottom line is, with no exception, every single one of us will have to face a certain amount of trials and tribulations as we journey through this earthly life, full of severe adversity that can hit anyone at any time. So my brothers and my sisters, when you feel distress and misery and think that the world has shrunk and the world is dark for you, just don't exclaim, why me? Don't say, why me? Don't question, why me? Rather, cling to your faith like you never did before and be certain that there is something awaiting you after your patience. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not test you with anything except that there is good in it for you, even if you were certain of the opposite. Remember, the believers never give up. We don't give up. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, O oh Allah, help us to be firm in our iman, to pass any test or trials we are faced with, O oh Allah, help us to be patient during any affliction and make us form in our belief in you. O oh Allah, forgive us our sins and grant us Jannatul Firdaus. Ameen.